today on Gamers Couch. Broom service. Welcome. Hello, everybody. We're we back. We are back. And we're hot. Not because we are so gorgeous, just because we're sweating. <laughs> it's warm, it's summer, and the lights are, well, heating us up. So be before we get roasted beef, <laughs> move. <laughs> Yeah. Um, let me, what, 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 what would you I like? I was just that we we'll, we'll pick up where we left off yeah. and uh, go through the rest of the Spiel des Jahres nominees. By now, there has already been, the winners have been announced, but we don't care because... Because time machine. Because our schedule kind of got distracted by other private things. Which you probably or maybe have seen on my Facebook page, so I'm not gonna get into that now. But uh, we're back from the hiatus, as you can see, and uh, I want to thank you all hiatus. for being so patient with uh, the gamers couch while being on a vacation and uh, still staying on the channel. And also, I want to welcome all the new subscribers. Welcome to the channel where the crazy people, which is me, Sarah, the artist behind Pinselgeschichten, and my lovely husband, Daniel, are doing videos. You are in. Yeah, but I'm not <laughs> It's the, on the marriage I'm, certificate. I'm not on the crazy people side. I'm on the of course you are. You married me, so that's, you know. Anyways, um, we're, we're uh, having the same kind of way through the videos, which is first of all him explaining all the rules and gameplay of a certain board game, which is today Broom every, Service. Every rule or just a brief overview, but every rule probably. Every single Everything. rule. Uh, then we talk about what we liked or maybe not liked about a game and then we wrap up the video with uh, funny stories and experiences that we had during playing those games. So. Uh, you can probably uh, already estimate this is not a short video. They never are, so well, lower certain, your expectations if you knew. This is certainly going to be a five to ten minute video, very brief. I, Beep. The I guess that might be due to us interrupting each other at the all the moment. time. <laughs> but please continue. Mm. No, I was just saying, of course, I was just drinking and you say continue. I love you too, sweetheart. We both gotta get used to the camera again, I guess. So, um, anyway, <laughs> what I was about to say, um, if you're one of the new subscribers watching those videos, don't ever expect a video less than 40 minutes about a game. We are known for talking long and uh, in-depth about the games. Still and very light on the content, so... You're good. We're just talking a lot. <laughs> In the description box below, there's the timestamps for when each section starts. So if you already know how the game plays and just might be interested in our experiences and opinions, just move forward to the timestamp named We're, We're Not Angry With You for skipping ahead. And now it's time, drum roll, for you to explain room service. Sure. Go ahead. Broom Service is a game that you win by losing the most friends that are around you, but it's cleverly disguised as a pickup and delivery game uh, in between. So you're one of the, or you're playing these little witches, actually you have two of those, that will go around the magical realm of I don't know what it's called, because I actually don't think it has a name. I should have been... The magic country. I should have been prepared, but uh, <sighs> I am not. So this is our magical realm, and we will fly around here, picking up, well, ingredients or potions, to be clear, and then delivering them to all these rich people living in their little towers. Why they're only li living in towers, I have no idea. Some have castles, but the castle guys don't want the potions. Only the tower guys want the potions. And you score points for each potion delivered uh, at the end of the game. He who has the most points wins the game. This entire thing goes over certain turns, so it is actually fairly quick to play. So, what are your options? You can either, on your turn, move one of your witches, you can pick up a potion, 
or you can try to remove little clouds that uh, will be on these areas or sometimes on uh, on areas that you can actually move to because kind of sitting on water is difficult even with the broom so if you want to move into this field and it still has one of these lovely little clouds on it you're not allowed to go there so the third thing you can do is to remove a cloud and uh, then score points for those as well at the end of the game. Now the interesting part about what are you going to do is it's not like you can decide well you can decide what you want to do but you have to do that in advance and depending on what the other players are doing they might prevent you from doing so. So you have a set of cards uh, and you might notice these are more than just three options that's because you have different versions of the same option i'll go through that in detail soon enough but you have these 10 cards and at the start of each round you are going to pick four of those and put the rest aside so the other players don't really know what are the four options that that you picked and uh, were gone so one of the players will start the game and will play a card. And let's say I'm playing the Witch of the Woods, which allows me to move one of my witch figures to one of the green wood fields uh, that is adjacent to that witch. Now, if I play this card, everybody else in the run has to play this card. So that's the first kind of thing to really annoy and troll your, all your friends. You can play a card and then you will hear groaning around the table where we would <sighs> because uh, obviously to score the most points you kind of want to have a certain order of how your cards are played maybe you want to pick up a potion first then move to the wood thing and then play a third card that allows you to deliver said potion to a tower but if someone opens up with this you have to play yours as well so the way it goes is let's say i'm the starting player i'm playing this witch and then in a, a, a clockwise around the table everybody else has to play the witch or the very same one to be uh, clear so what are the options we have and there's actually one more uh, little trick to to this i'll get to that in a moment uh we have four different uh, sorry uh, we have uh, yeah there it is we have four different cards I was like, I was sure that there are four different cards, but then I looked at my hand and only had three cards in there. Which because the fourth one was hidden. We have four cards that allow you to move one of your witches. And as you can already probably tell from the color, one allows you to move to a mountain, one to wood, one to a meadow, and one to, uh, well, like the hills. Um, and uh, that is always uh, accounting where do you want to move your witch towards to and you always are allowed to move to a field that is adjacent to you to one of your witch figurines you can still decide at that point which one of these two you want to move so uh, even if someone screwed up your plan maybe you're better off moving your second the one you didn't plan to move uh, at all for, for that thing then there's three different cards that allow you to pick up a potion one gives you a green potion, one gives you a purple potion, and one gives you the orange potion, which are all, well, looking like these little... Now, someone said this This looks like little wooden feminist symbols, which <laughs> I well. just, was no, com no social comment for me throwing them down. But uh, these little wooden uh, holy hand grenades are the, <laughs> are the potions that you're supposed to, to carry, and then deliver and how do you deliver that well by playing one of these two druid cards uh, these are uh, the first or these are the only ones where you have to um, well, have two functions on the same card so this one uh, allows you to deliver to a tower that's on a hill or a mountain and this one allows you to deliver to a tower that's on a meadow or in the woods um, and last but not least, as I said initially, there's uh, a single card, the Weather Fairy, the Weather Witch, whatever, uh, that allows you to remove one cloud that is adjacent to the area that you're standing on. And to do so, each cloud has a little number on here, and you have to spend little, well, uh, what are they called, uh, little wands uh, to... Uh, 
dis- thank God for Harry Potter, so we to, know all the words. To dispel <laughs> this cloud, and you get to keep this because every cloud also has a, a lightning bolt on it, and the amount of lightning bolts at the end uh, determine extra points that you may score. And yes, you might have guessed it. Uh, these go uh, the higher you go, the more points are you getting per uh, per bolt there. Now. That in itself is a pretty good way to annoy people and sounds like a really strategic game and you will play your turn, choose your cards, hope that nobody else is in front of you and uh, plays a card that you want to play. But here's another little spin on this. Uh, on each of these cards there's two areas so you have a choice when you're playing this card. You can either say I'm playing this uh, Witch of the Hills cowardly which allows you to immediately do the top choice which is simply move the witch to uh, the next hill area that you want to move to or you can pray, uh, play this bravely now if you play this bravely you also are allowed uh, in addition to moving the witch to deliver a potion to the area you just moved to so obviously this is a lot better it combines the effect of the other cards but if you want to play a card bravely, you have to wait for everybody else around the table to either uh, not have that card and they pass, or if they have their, that card, they are playing it cowardly. If they decide to play it bravely, you don't get to do anything, which is super annoying. So <laughs> if you're the first one to play this card, it's really risky to play a card bravely, but if you're certain that nobody else at the table actually picked that card up, you're good to go. Or uh, there's another layer to that in terms of timing. If you're playing this bravely and someone else decides to play the card bravely, he will start the next turn. So if you have another card that you want to play brave for sure, or at least with a very high probability, you might play one to lure out someone else to play this, this card in a, in a brave manner. And every of these cards has these bonus effects. So every movement card has the bonus effect of you get to instant deliver a potion. Obviously you still need to have that potion to be able to deliver it. Um, the uh, collecting uh, the pickup cards have varying options. So this one allows you to pick up either, a, usually playing it cowardly, pick up an orange potion or a wand. And if you play it bravely, you get a potion and two wands for that. This guy gives you instead of a purple potion, two purple potions and a potion of your choice. And green guy, instead of giving you one green potion, you get two and a wand. Uh, And last but not least, we have the Weather Witch, which still allows you to dispel a cloud, but gives you three uh, victory points extra for doing so, Um, which is pretty rad. So that is the main point of tension in this game. You, first of all, you pick your four cards, you try to figure out, did I pick cards that the others don't have? Can I go in and play Brave? Will I be the last maybe in turn? And that's a guaranteed way to play a card bravely if I have that card. Uh, Or do I want to go first and kind of ensure that the cards I've played are still in order? So that's your turn. You pick your four cards. You, if, If you're starting the turn, you're playing a card. Decide then and there if you're playing it cowardly or bravely. If you play it cowardly, resolve it at once. If you play it bravely, it has to go around the table for someone who might uh, intervene there. And that's kind of what you do for seven turns and then the game ends. To make things a little bit more interesting, there's 10 um, well event cards uh, that will, will modify the round for uh, the time being. So for example, uh, there's a card that says, uh, if, you, if both your witches are standing on the same type of terrain at the end of the turn, you get, well, four points extra. Or this card says if you're um, paying one of everything, so one of each um, potions plus a wand, you get nine victory points. And so on. So there's the different options that spice things a little bit up. And um, the reason that it's ten cards is because you remove three cards uh, in advance and you never really know when what is coming and makes it a little bit more uh, well, interesting to go. At the end of the game, you have these little scoring uh, sheet. Um, 
you obviously get to keep all the points that you accumulated for delivering potions. You get uh, three points or a little bit more than later on for each um, um, lightning bolt that you have collected. And if you still have resources at the end of the game, you get score uh, points for that as well. Although you will always, almost always get more points by delivering or, and using up those resources than just keeping them. Um, that's the base game. Uh, the, as you might have seen, the board actually has two different sides. There's a, a, a simple side, which is this one, and it's almost indistinguishable from the uh, more difficult side. But what you actually... This is the simple side. And see how difficult it is to distinguish between those two. Um, Who caught it? But uh, the more difficult side has some extra uh, spaces here. Where and it you... has big letters. Yes, and uh, has these spaces for some additional content or variants. So there's uh, four different things that you may use to alter the game or you can use them all four at once. Um, there's uh, little tokens uh, like these that go into the wood areas. If you go to one of these you get to keep it, put it in front of you and you may use it on your turn whenever you want. Like this one allows you, uh, I think, to have a fifth card for the turn when you pick your four cards. Then there's uh, one that... Um, what is it? Um, I think there's one one that allows you to, uh, if you're playing a card cowardly, instead you can just score five points and stuff like that. But you have to discard that token afterwards. So who gets the token gets to keep it and may use it on his turn. Then there's these hill tokens, and uh, yes, that goes through the entire game almost. Everything is tied to a specific kind of terrain. Um, with these allowing you to teleport across the map very quickly or uh, giving you another tower that uh, allows it to score additional points at some, some place. Uh, and last but not least, there's, uh, in terms of terrain tokens, there's these um, mountain tokens that um, also come with these little amulets and you will place one amulet of each player color next to that one. If you get there with your witch, uh, you get to take the amulet and take the action that's on here, like pick pick an additional potion that you want to do uh, or make an instant delivery and stuff like that. And these amulets are again worth points at the end of the game. With if you get all three, then that's another fifteen points. So it's actually worth trying to go through each uh, to each mountain. And there's also some uh, additional storm tiles that have uh, well additional uh, stuff on here that you get uh, once you uh, make make that tile, like additional victory points, additional. Um, potions and so on and so on. Although I have to say that is just if the if the base game gets a bit too shallow for you I think the main part of this game is picking up the cards and then trying to figure out if you want to play it cowardly or bravely <coughs> Sorry. and end up with uh, uh, the most points at the end of the game and uh, as I said earlier this game is actually all about getting rid of your friends and it's just cleverly disguised as a pickup and delivery game. Bravo! Well done! So, section one, check! Awesome! Uh, there's one little thing that uh, I want to add to that because you... What? Either I, I something? I, no, I guess um, either I overheard it and because my mind is wandering while you know, he I, explains I, things. I have said it. Uh, that when you're less than five players, you... Oh, yeah. I, I'm sorry. Because one of my followers on Instagram asked about exactly that um, um, mechanic, so I, that's why I actually remember <laughs> you forgetting it. It's, it's like, yay, awesome. Okay. Oh, it doesn't say on two the one. Two to five. It's, it's two to five, right? Uh, yeah, it says on this, the lower On, on the bottom part one, here. it's somewhere. Yeah. yeah, two to five. Two to five players. 45 to 75 minutes. And ages, ages four, 10 and up. Yeah. So um, if you're playing with five players, uh, Things are confusing all around because everybody has a card they want to play and your chances of well having a card that someone else has um, are pretty high. Uh, if you're playing with few
fewer than five players, you start to emulate additional players by bringing out cards that give you, well, negative points if you play a card that is uh, matches up with that one. So what you do is you just pick one of the unused player uh, cards like these and uh, then shuffle, shuffle them up pick seven of those and uh, draw one of those in addition to the event cards that you're going to pick. And whenever another player uh, wants to play one of these cards that are out there, you get a, a point deduction from, uh, from doing so. So you may play that card and um, we'll get plus points out of that, uh, but you just have to keep in mind. And it just makes things a little bit more, I think, unpredictable because otherwise if you're playing this with two and uh, only with two, this uh, gets really into the, okay, I, I now have enough time and can focus on what the other player is doing and what I, I guess we already diverged into the, what mm -hmm. we're thinking about the game, but oh, just to describe that, it's a little bit a different game at less than, or at two player than it is at five players. And that it's getting more strategic, the fewer players you have uh, and more trolly the, higher the count of players it is. I Especially think. if you have a cool group of people to play it with. Yeah, we, we, we can tell you how that is whenever we play with a cool group of people because... Uh, we have a very cool gaming group. Be nice. They come you over. Know, you know who you are and you know... <laughs> well, I guess last weekend wasn't his uh, winning weekend. Anyway, we're we'll talking about that in another... Uh, game of scotch but now we are definitely done with the first section and uh, because you talked so much uh, do you want me to start with the like I'm, and dislike I'm, section i'm done i'm out of here it's like Goodbye. did you drop the mic <laughs> no <laughs> please sit next to me please okay here we go uh likes and dislikes so i'm playing cowardly yeah, because, well, I'm not surprised. Uh, anyways. Uh, but you wanted to say something. <laughs> yes, please be cowardly silent yeah, while on. I talk. <laughs> so, uh, let's start with uh, what I do like about the game. Well, there is not really anything that I actually dislike. There's Spoilers. some things that I do prefer um, in different kinds of games. Now, what I liked. Uh, first of all, the quality, again, of the components is really lovely, so big bonus uh, when actually unpacking the game and... Bonus. Bonus. Not boners. <laughs> no, did I say boner? No, no. Uh, oh, for God's sake. No. I'm so sorry. Beep. Big bonus. <laughs> bonus. <laughs> unpacking the game, uh, the woodwork... <laughs> It's really lovely, as is the board itself. Mm -hmm. It doesn't warp or anything, so hosa, there, <laughs> all is good. Yeah. The artwork is solid. It's nothing too fancy when it comes to the style, but the execution is lovely, so uh, I, I like to look at that as well. Now, for the game itself. Um, before we uh, bought all of the nominees for the Spiel des Jahres. I didn't look at the game online, like checking other reviews or anything. So I didn't really know how the game would play, what the objective was and, uh, well, what the game essentially was about. So didn't know anything. First time playing just the two of us. I was uh, first feeling like, uh, well, that's all. Um, he explained it to me, what to do, what options are. And I was like, yeah, that sounds boring, but hold that thought. It's not. Um, it's actually way more... <laughs> so, it's way more to the game than you would think at first, um, which is a very, very nice surprise. Now, as he already hinted, the fewer players are on the table, the less, um, well, of course, bickering there is, the less trolling there is, the more strategic the game becomes, which is a nice way of the game, but not my favorite way to play the game. Um, with two players, you, well, you're not in your opponent's face so much, so you get way more tactical, and at least for me, the goal is to score as high as possible, so that's pretty much what I uh, want to do when playing 
with two players only. Now with more players, no matter um, if it's four or five, so I don't distinguish there, um, it's way more about the bickering and trolling and not so much about winning, at least for me. So I like that part of the game, that aspect that you actually play a game just to have fun and not to win. Mm -hmm. So it's more like in the era of concept for me than in... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ho hold on, hold on. The easy version. I'm talking about the easy version. So uh, it's way more in the area of games like uh, Concept or Dixit, uh, wh which I do play mostly for just enjoying and not so much for winning. There's other games where that isn't the case. But uh, when you flip to the other side, the um, uh, advanced game, it's more on the winning again for me, not so much just the having fun trolling. Now, what I like about all of these options is that they are in the game, they come with the game, so um, replayability and different kinds of playing the game is really, really high with this one, just uh, by having either a strategic and tactical game or just a um, in-your-face bitch game, which is, depending on your mood, really, really cool. And it all comes in one box. So that is pretty much the biggest plus for me of the game. Um, the theme of the game is, yeah, it's nice, but... I think I would like the same game with any kind of other topic, theme, whatever. So being uh, the witch that delivers the potions called Jack Daniels and <laughs> what else um, is not very important to me. Um, it's not... Oh, it, it also wouldn't um, draw me to buy the game. It's actually more the mechanics for me this time round. So that's my two cents. Ta-da. What about you? You can talk. Yeah, I like I'm drinking. It. I like it. Bye. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, thank you. People might be interested in your opinion, honey. I know it's a surprise, but it might happen. Yeah, you, you already said a lot of the stuff that I was thinking about the game. I, I would go so far to say I severely only prefer the four to five player uh, version or playing with four to five video people with this one. Um, it is all about the the social interaction, uh, and as as you said, the theme. Um, I like the artwork. It has some of these. Uh, I guess difficult to see. No but... autofocus. This is not a <sighs> vlogging camera. <sighs> this is a. Um, actually, you can see it on the on the big. That that kind of uh, drawing style reminds me of some of the children's books I, I had, like um, uh, Mickey and, and yeah. stuff like that. So uh, probably not telling you uh, anything at all. But yeah, um, if you if you grew up in the eighties in Germany, you might uh, recognize the name Mickey. Yeah, well, so maybe um, yeah, whatever. But, but uh, the th it could be almost any theme and. Would still work out um, so it is or the the gameplay interaction is the interesting part here and the social interaction uh, following that um, going forward if I if I want to play a strategic game that uh, is about um, more about the thinky part um, I I'd more go with something like lots of water deep mm. uh, which is it's a worker placement. It's actually difficult to uh, compare uh, lots of water deep to this one. Um, do we have another strategic game, by the way, we that that's it the, has that same mechanic? I don't. Uh, no, we don't. We don't. Right? I, I I have some in electronic form, yeah, but, but uh, we don't have that. So, no. uh, as you might have guessed, it's like we don't have a lot of uh, pickup and delivery games, or just one with this one uh, in uh, in our shelves so uh, for for that i i'm fine with having one of them uh, i don't need uh, certainly need uh, more or at least not one in that theme um maybe uh, something more space themed would be uh, mm, that something would be that cool. yeah that's galaxy trucker for example is i think oh. one of those yeah there's there's some aspects of that mechanic in 
aquasphere, but, but only very, very little. Uh, but aquasphere is also more worker yeah, based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then. So I don't, I don't. Yeah, well, not even one of the main mechanics but, in the, uh, is is the pickup and delivery. But, but in to our be games. to be honest, no. this this could be an entire different mechanism. Or uh, the thing that makes it so charming is the the cart. Um, gameplay thing which is kind of what reminds me of worker placement where you have mm. these 10 10 options each turn and you have to prioritize some of them and then turn order comes in which also gets more and more important well although you're not placing a worker it feels that way it feel you feel the tension it's just enhanced by the fact that uh, other players may totally disrupt your uh, turn by uh, also adding the brave and cowards uh, um, options of how to play the card with the different things. And it's, yeah, it's a risk or reward thing that is very rewarding if you can pull it off or you actually feel really, really cool if you're the last in, in, the, in the round and you already know that you have the card that someone else is playing and but you have to you so one of the options I didn't say that explicitly, but I think it's obvious. You're not allowed to say if you have a card unless it's your turn, because that obviously um, influences or would influence if someone's playing a card bravely or cowardly. So what could happen if in a five-player game that uh, the first one left of me plays a card bravely, and then the next two also have that card and they really agonize over. Ah, do I play that cowardly or do I play bravely? Do the other three have it? Do I want to be the first one on the next card? And that we had moments, um, and I'm already going over mm. to the. But there's. We got a raid first. There are moments in, in this game where you have that happen and um, you see that one plays a card to argue for five minutes, and at the end it's all in vain because the last guy said, Oh, by the way, I also have brave. And, <laughs> yeah. <sorry. laughs> yeah, yeah, international set of appreciation. Um, so let's quickly rate before we go in lots of, into lots and lots of uh, experiences that we had with the different kinds of games. So all three options. Um, let's let's rate. What's what's your rating? This uh, from me gets three ones and a lightning strike. Uh, the international uh, seal of witchcraft approves. Okay, well, um, for me it's a 9 out of 10 uh, on the 1 to awesome scale and it only gets uh, 1 point than, less than awesome because I'm not too fond of the two-player version. Um, I, I would, uh, if, it, if it would be um, a bit more interactive with the two-player version like the two players interacting more than just with the cards and really uh, being able to get out of their ways um i think i would uh, give it an awesome but uh i think a solid nine is it's good too so yeah I, there it is uh on on the uh, recommendation thing uh, i think this is very well suited for uh, playing with your family but keep in mind that it says 10 years and up. 10 year old might not be that good at keeping a poker face than yeah. you are, um, which makes things probably really difficult for, for someone at that age. And, and it can get, I think it could get a little bit complicated with all the extras and variants, but the base game itself should be perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, it is entirely non offensive in terms of theme and artwork. Um, there's, uh, it's, it is really family friendly, yeah. apart from the fact that you want to strangle everybody around the table. Uh, but that's kind of that could, normal that family could, life. That could be just me uh, projecting <laughs> no, my, uh, no. my understanding of social interaction. And um, that's the perfect segue into our third section, which is funny stories and experiences. And now, knowing how he feels um, when it comes to social interaction when, and board games and maybe being screwed over again and again and again, you can imagine how fun it is <laughs> playing with him on the table when he's swearing so colorfully <laughs> every single turn. It's really, really awesome. Swearing in purple, <laughs> orange and green. Yeah. 
<laughs> and a bit of light blue from the wand. But um, so do you have any particular experience, story, wisdom that you want to share when it comes to the uh, two player game that we played two or three rounds of? Um, uh, did you feel like me uh, that it that it is really really easy to get out of the other players yeah. uh, way and not really the the bitching yeah. and bickering part is not really working? Yeah, I I, I thought that it's well it's it's uh, it's literally like uh, from from the um, from the uh, occupying zones uh, perspective easy to get out of the way of someone else. Uh, yeah, what I did not say, if you deliver one of those potions, uh, you use up towers. There's a couple of towers that do not get used up, so if you, if you place the potion in back into the um, uh, the main resource pool. But some of the towers, uh, specifically the ones that give you either an extra wand or extra points, usually require you to put your potion onto that tower and no other player may use that tower uh, anymore. In a two-player game, you you would be hard pressed to annoy someone else by taking the towers uh, away from them and the boards uh, you probably were not able to see that but the boards also designed in a, in a fashion that uh, the towers that give the most points are all on the outer edges of the map so you have to move there you have to get rid of clouds on on the way there um also, that that the uh, gathering lightning bolts in uh, in a two-player game is obviously a little bit more easy than uh, in with more players. Um, yeah. th that said, with uh, if you have a lot of players at the, at the table, the uh, one one wand clouds really will get away very quickly. Okay. But uh, no, to to your question on the on the two-player game, I it's I just. Bland is the first thing that comes yeah. to mind. Maybe maybe it would be a tid bit more interesting if you just played with half the board with two players. Mm -hmm. Because you always start uh, with um, your witches on the same spot, no matter how many players there are. So maybe half the board where the cost list, the left-hand side only, use no, that I one. Don't, I, don't I, do, I don't know, but, but the board felt way, way, way too big for two players. Um, and the uh, mechanic with uh, using the set of cards of a player that is not at the table that you do use with two, three, yes. and four players is not It's not enough. as strong as having yeah. an actual yeah. player. And table, yeah, and it's, it's way better, that mechanic is way better with three and four players. Yeah. So there, the mechanic I, actually does yeah, I, maybe influence your, I, your I choice. Would, I would go so far as to say if you are, can only really recommend it to three and up. Or the, yeah. May I? I don't know. Maybe maybe if, uh, if you really enjoy two player games, and uh, having that, I'm okay. I'm looking at where is uh, are your witches? What are your next options? If you really like that. Uh, that is perfectly sure. fine game for you. The uh, but the uh, that for me at least interesting aspect of picking the cards and trying to get into other people's heads and uh, making making them um, even miserable just, even just by looking at them or uh, angrily making them play a card cowardly instead of uh, playing it bravely. That is the fun part. And that is in. I, it's not entirely lost, but it's very shallow in a two-player game uh, yeah. compared to uh, three or, or more. Yeah, uh, when telling him uh, or him telling about the the cards and trying to stare and really the the funny thing is we played it with uh, in our gaming group with four players first, bitching and bickering and really being in each other's face and him being quite successful with the angry stare. Um, but then we played it with five players, and the fifth player was really not impressed with his angry stare. So she did not only win the she game. She did not know me yet. No. Yes, yeah, she didn't That's, know him. She didn't know that she'll be bound and hung across the roof when. And we were all just like, "Yay!" Him not succeeding and uh, her play, winning the game, uh, it was so much fun because he really was sitting there like For sake, uh, you, you do not only screw up my turn, 
but uh, I, I'm I'm not successful in screwing up your turn either. So um, it was yeah, kind of like a it double worked. loss. It worked sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, but not as well as well, with the four that's, of us that's, only. <laughs> that's one one of one of the points. Obviously, this game would benefit greatly if you know the people you're playing yeah. with. But then again, it's also fun to play this with complete strangers and just. Well, move out of your or move them out of their comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, just... and it gets uh, social awkwardness out of the way very, very easily because you, well, you you don't try to ever play nice. Yeah. At least if you're try a to normal rub it gamer. In a little bit. Yeah, and if you're the nice guy. Don't. Yeah, and at, at one point you you say something and everybody else laughs. So social awkwardness out of the way. It's a very nice game to get to know new people yeah. in a gaming group. And it's and, it is very easy to pick up and teach. I, yeah, I, I think yeah, that is very, uh, very one easy. one of the, the good parts about yeah. it. If you don't play with the extra variants, you can teach this game within three to five minutes. Yeah. It is And yeah. like like I said, it felt like that's all that that yeah. sounds kinda of boring. Um it, it, even uh, or especially if you're used to quite elaborate um teaching time for other games and then this uh, little box comes along and you are taught a new game in like three minutes and you expect nothing of it and then you enjoy it so so very much so i really really like that another experience though that i um had um actually curious if you felt the same way when we played the advanced version mm -hmm. Did you feel that the mechanic with the cards got uh, less important than with the game, no. uh, with the base? Because it was, it felt for me, it felt more like okay, I could could get out of the way of other players sitting on my little island and well, not really being screwed there's, with. There's more, there's more points, or there's more ways to score, but you still have to move there and you have to play the, your cards yeah. to get rid of the clouds and that yeah but so once you're once i was on my island i was like nobody's ever gonna screw with me again um well, unless someone is playing the there on that island there you only had two different druids to deliver so if someone yeah. is playing those yeah and uh, i but i could always play cowardly and still score 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 yeah, but nobody would less uh, points than what uh, other people could get from going around the the map yeah, true, but it felt a bit more like the two-player mm -hmm. version than the easy mode uh, three to five-player version for me. And, I and, was just curious. If and you... and so since we've been at hiatus, um, we <laughs> didn't we did talk about the game and the rules and what we thought. We actually did not talk about the manual. Which, oh yeah, uh, I, I usually like to do. Uh, so. These four pages describe the base game, and these two pages describe the well, variants. And uh, I, even if you don't know German, this is a very large form. So yeah, it's a twelve it's, plus. It is. It is very easy. It's um, to to grasp, um, yeah. I, and it's it's short enough to actually read through in in one full uh, full setting. Um, but yeah, it's entirely. Or, or works works out uh, actually a lot of text so if you take a look at this there's a couple of cards in there but there's walls of text in, in here with uh, little annotations at, at the sides which help out but um, if you're used to having something like fantasy flight manuals with a lot of pictures and here's where it goes there and you can actually see what, what they mean that's not the manual but it's perfectly fine it's easy to understand and i mean i pretty much explained every bit of rules to you so you already see it's not that of a complicated game yeah so the question for me to you would be uh do you think it fits into the category kennerspiel des jahres or would you maybe see it kind of in the normal spiel des jahres section were you surprised to have it in the kennerspiel Because I was, say, kind of. Was yeah, that's, that's some a, things that's, I understand. Yeah, that's actually a good question. I, I haven't thought thought about. Because you're not as crazy as me. The um, 
It is it, so in comparison to uh, something like Machikor or Code Express and uh, the game, this is way more complicated than those, even though this is really simple from the games. But that being said, um, this game I think is even less complicated than Catan. Or at least on the same level as Catan. Now, I think Catan, when that came out, there was no Canon spiel. Yeah, that um, category was new. Uh, but yeah, so I think uh, it is, while it is less complicated than some other Canon spiels uh, from this year or last year, I think it still fits the category for, for Canon spiel. Okay. It, is, it is fairly involved if you're playing with the Barons. Uh, and it is in also involved in terms of interaction. I mean, there's this is not a, a simple. I'm playing a card, trying to count to hundred or, or and back, uh, or um, I'm playing a card, trying to shoot someone. This is really yeah, I'm playing a card, and I at the same time I have to get into the heads of four other people at the table. I need sure. to keep track of what is the optimal strategy to score more points. So yeah, this is a lot more complicated than the. Uh, yeah, but game. you left out Machikoro, and I actually think that the base game with three to five players for broom service is in the realms of Machikoro really? when it comes no. to difficulty. No way for me. This no, is, this is way more not, com complicated not... in terms of you have to think about where I'm going to move to get, score the most points. Where do I pick up the potion? Or are you just lucky as I am? I don't think about I, I, I think the the. Um, <laughs> the things to consider here are way higher than okay. uh, or way more than in Magikoro where you uh, well given you this you have to think about which card to buy to uh, increase your chances but at the end of the day you just roll a die and then execute uh, with this game you have a lot more uh, well dependencies between the choices and I think that's mm. what's uh, that's what put making it, in it the more, more, more okay. complicated I, I think it's still a, in terms of uh, it's not a heavy euro, or, or I wouldn't classify it uh, as that. Um, but it's certainly not just a simple dice rolling game or like card mm. card based. Game. Yeah, because I was for for me, it's borderline when it comes to the simple version, three to five players. With the um, advanced version, with uh, the amulets and stuff, I definitely cannot spiel. Mm. Of course, no question there. But the simple just. Uh, pick and deliver, try to uh, block your uh, opponents, only these mechanics. I, for me, it was borderline. I thought, well, it could, it could have fit into the usual uh, simple I, Spiel des Jahres I mean, kind of thing. Also, also uh, just, just the, the point where we've said we actually recommend to have more players for this game, uh, having five, finding five people to That's, play the yeah. game, um, is might might be one of also the the reasons why it's not as accessible as uh, the regular Spiel des Jahres. But so if 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 you would ask me, I would say this is the perfect family game to play at a weekend instead of watching a movie or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or play boring two round, TV. Uh, play two rounds of, of this. Yeah. And the all the Spiel des Jahres nominees are actually games where I could see someone playing that during the week or at a, yeah. at a lunch break or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they're, they're like after dinner games. Yeah, so. they're, they're quicker to. Oh yeah. no, I have to say the Cold Express needs more time to set up, and yeah. uh, Machikoro also needs some time. But yeah, it, yeah, this you one, can fit it in there. You don't feel as stressed out after the yeah. the uh, base uh, Spiel des Jahres candidates than after playing this. Yeah, you yeah. need a week to see your friends again afterwards, and I think with these words of wisdom, we part away. You and me next week, <laughs> where we will be back and with Elysium talking, talking about the other. Yep, with Elysium. I already teased that. Tell people about the outro and the YouTubes and the likes and the subscribes. You just did. <laughs> Thank you very I'm, much. I'm, I'm playing a brave like <laughs> and uh, currently Coward subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> Something I don't know. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave questions or comments in the comment section below. Also, if you feel like 
liking or sharing this video, go ahead, we would love that. And if you haven't already and like these weird kind of videos, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you want to have teasers, Facebook and Instagram is a good choice for that. It's all in the comment section below. Have fun, have a good weekend, maybe you can play a game. Ta-da! And now, bloopers. Goodbye! <laughs> Bye! <laughs> no, for real, bloopers. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, I guess it's too hard. Um, big bonus. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Okay. Oh, well, now, um... The as uh, uh, blah 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 blah. I got that. Now that we gotta play New Orleans. <laughs> oh, we I, actually we can okay. just play all in all, not not just New Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> is it, I is it no new glasses. <laughs> just oh, all okay. and all yeah. is Orleans. All, we, so we're playing old Orleans and yeah. new Orleans. Fuck you. <laughs> I love him, but sometimes he's just. <laughs> You know, he's doing what he's supposed to do as a good husband, but sometimes the time he's just not that great. Please do the... Anyways, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please let them, leave them. <laughs> Under another video, because someone is obviously not oh! focused enough to, to do this properly. I or can't... you can do it down there and remind her to become more professional for... I didn't... I had a six week hiatus. I gotta get used again to the camera stuff no, and the talking no. and talk to the camera. They're watching you. Yeah. Yeah, I got a chip in my brain. Thank you very much. Again. Papa! I'm I'm just gonna put that as that as bloopers Goodbye. at the end of the video. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I'm gonna cut it. So